Hello and welcome to this third Sunday of Easter as we continue to hear the resurrection stories of the early church, how it journeyed from unbelief to unbelief. Stories that are sprinkled with doubts. We remember as we hear these stories that a faith that is not questioning is a faith that needs to be questioned. Friends, we gather and pray as always in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Today we gather to celebrate the third Sunday of Easter, and to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins, and we ask for mercy and pardon. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God Almighty of mercy upon us forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray that Christ will give us a share in the glory of his unending life. Gracious God, may we look forward with hope to our resurrection, for you have made us your sons and daughters and restored the joy of our youth. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is alive and rules with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom, <clears throat> pardon me, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. <laughs>
reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous, for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything to eat here? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead, and on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, uh, I don't know about you, but I learn a lot from Father Lawman and his homilies. Uh, it's obvious that Father Lawman uh, prays over the scriptures, really grapples with what the scriptures are saying, what they can say to us, and also studies and, and does exegetical work, and I really appreciate that, because I, I, I learn so much from your homilies. Um, one, of, one of Father Laman's homilies that I remember several years ago, I believe the, the gospel was the Doubting Thomas gospel, which we don't particularly hear about today, but we, 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 we have a situation where the disciples are gathered uh, and, and, and they, they doubt that it's the Lord. And Father Laman in that homily talked about Dom, Doubting Thomas and uh, said something like this, who wouldn't doubt 
when they had, and actually Father Lawman last week in his homily kind of intimated uh, this as well. Who wouldn't doubt when they had put their faith, uh, when, the, when the person that they had put their faith in suddenly fell apart? When this Jesus so close to God with miracles and all the wonder about that, in the end is murdered as a criminal and cries out that God has abandoned him. Those are Jesus' last words. Disillusioned. They were disillusioned. They doubted. They crawled into themselves and walked away, separated from the community. How often we do that, don't we? Did you ever look up to someone, could it be a best friend, could be a spouse, and then they fell off the pedestal? Those who have experienced the pain of divorce or a broken relationship in, w in which we put all of our faith in this person, and then they leave us, and we're left shattered. Who wouldn't doubt? Who wouldn't doubt? Who wouldn't crawl into themselves in those moments? Yet, as Father Lawman said some years ago, Thomas sees something in the gathered community for Eucharist, in the breaking of the bread that continued to gather and how they experienced the risen Christ, how something was different and more positive about them, despite the fact that they too were disillusioned, frightened, and not knowing what to do. Thomas noticed a happiness in them after experiencing the risen Christ, and they boldly and happily went out and proclaimed the risen Lord, as we heard in our first reading today. Twelve-step programs call this attraction rather than promotion. An addict sees something in those who are overcoming addictions that they want, and so they're attracted and transformed by that, not cajoled into it. As Father Lawman said in that homily some years ago, may people see and experience something different in us and be attracted. May we be witnesses of the resurrection as the gospel says, you are witnesses to these things. May we be witnesses of the resurrection in a world so full of negativity and concentrating on what is wrong instead of what is right. In my words, may we be the fools, the fools that witness to signs of goodness and new life and resurrection in our world. May people see that despite uh, pains in our life, there is a peace about us and a joy about us, a hope about us. This is the promise of our faith. Think of those who have no faith when the going gets rough. I don't know how they do it. Or think of those who have no spiritual community to lift them up, to fall back on. One of the things that touches me deeply is our Facebook prayer requests for people. Uh, we get requests almost every week. And when they are posted on Facebook, your response is tremendous. Your comments are tremendous. Um, and I think that speaks powerfully of the spiritual community that we share and how we can rely on one another. Sometimes we're not going to feel peace and hope. But if we keep coming back and if we keep feeding ourselves like, like the disciples kept coming back as fearful as they were to break bread and to tell stories. If we keep coming back and feeding ourselves spiritually and don't pull back on that like Thomas. Hope and peace and joy will arise and we'll have the support of a community to help bolster our faith. I personally have experienced 
your support. Father Lawman has experienced your support, and I know many of you have experienced the support of this community when moments and times get tough. That's why the apostles gathered and recognized him in the breaking of the bread. One line that struck me in the gospel today is when Jesus says, give me something to eat. Give me something to eat. Some scripture scholars say that, that Jesus says this to prove to the disciples that it is him and that he's not a ghost and that he's alive. Because if he eat, a ghost doesn't eat something. So if, if Jesus eats something, that means he's alive and he's not a ghost. Give me something to eat. That line really struck me as I prepared and prayed over these scriptures. We need good food for our bodies, do we not? We need good nourishment. Similarly, we need good spiritual food and not junk food. We're fed a lot of junk food today. We're fed a lot of mental junk food. Give me something to eat. Give me something to eat. That's why we come here. Whether it's in person, thank God that we're beginning to gather in person again, or whether it's you watching online. Give me something to eat. That's why we come here. That's why we tend to our spiritual lives. So we can get some food and good food in the midst of all the junk food that's thrown at us every day. It's, it's amazing how the spirit works. Um, after I pretty much prepared this homily, uh, one of the reflection daily reflection books that I use is called Words to Live By, Inspiration for Every Day by Eknath Eswaran. I love this book because he draws from all world religions and spiritual traditions. But right after I got done preparing this homily, I read the meditation for April 16th, and it said this. He starts with a quote from the Buddha, which says, be vigilant, guard your mind against negative thoughts. And then he goes on reflecting. Today, many people are well informed about nutrition. We worry about junk food, which is a legitimate concern, but shouldn't we be just as worried by the low-grade food we sometimes feed our minds? There is junk food, yes, but there are also junk thoughts. Take a close look at the entertainment pages of your newspaper, for example. We become used to this kind of fear that we seldom even question it. I can imagine what people who lived in the dark ages would say if they saw today's paper from the Bay Area. They think we lived in the dark ages? What about them? Millions of people spend hours every day feeding their minds and the minds of their children with unadulterated junk. And isn't it true? I think we're all affected by this. I certainly am. I'm kind of sucked into that, that vortex of, of junk food. So why do we come here? We come here to be fed a different kind of food. And I hope we are fed good food and not junk food. And if you don't feel fed here, then please go somewhere where you are fed. And if you are fed here, shout it from the rooftops. Invite others to come with you and to get good food here. Good food. One thing that's always made me wonder about the resurrection and the resurrection appearance, appearances of Jesus is why didn't the disciples recognize Jesus after he was risen? They followed him, they lived with him, they were with him for those three years, but they didn't recognize him. They knew him intimately, but didn't recognize him. How could this be? Mary Magdalene at the tomb doesn't recognize him until 
Jesus looks at her and says, Mary. The disciples on the way to Emmaus walk with him that whole way, and they don't recognize that it's Jesus until Jesus breaks the bread, and they recognize him in the breaking of the bread. In today's gospel, Jesus appears to them, and they think that it's a ghost. They knew him, but why didn't they recognize him? Perhaps it was because it was too good to be true. Richard Rohr has an interesting take on the resurrection and why they and us can't see the risen Christ. Richard says this in his book, Immortal Diamond, The Search for Our True Self. And I never thought about this until I read this a couple years ago. Richard says, we are not so at home with the resurrected form of things, despite a yearly springtime, healings in our bodies, and 10,000 forms of newness in every event and every life. The death side of things is what grabs our imagination and fascinates us as fear and negativity always do, I am sad to say. And he says this, we have to be taught how to look for anything infinite, positive, or good, which for some reason is much more difficult. We've sent, spent centuries of philosophy trying to solve the problem of evil, yet I believe the much more confounding and astounding issue is the problem of good. How do we account for so much gratuitous and sheer goodness in our lives and in our world? Tackling this problem would achieve much better results. Much better results. I love that statement when he says we have to be taught how to look for anything positive, good, and infinite. And we naturally seem to gravitate to the sensationalism of the negative. That's why we come here. We come here to be taught and to support one another in seeing the good in ourselves and in our world. How many of us don't recognize what is good in ourselves? How many of us don't affirm and reflect on and drink in what is good in ourselves but concentrate on what is bad or what we've done wrong? If you're anything like me, I beat myself up mercilessly. And I concentrate on that when words have come out of my mouth or when I've done something wrong, I beat myself up mercilessly. But I take very little time to meditate on and to affirm the goodness, the basic goodness that is inside of me. And I don't think I'm alone in that. Or we concentrate on what is bad in those around us and our world. How often many of us concentrate on the negative instead of the positive. Culturally, we most often look at the negative instead of the positive, and we sensationalize the negative and the painful. I've said it before, I'll say it again. If we had a half hour of national news that was nothing but good news, I believe it would have a transforming effect on our society. If we just heard good news, how much would that affect our psyche for the good? I believe I told this story before, but um, I contacted Don G. Uh, I think most of you know Don G is one of the anchors on Wave 3 News. I love me some Don G. I just, and, and Don G loves her some lawmen. <laughs> They're always getting pictures taken together. But, uh, um, but I contacted Dawn on uh, uh, Facebook, and I asked her, I, I said, you know, has Wave 3 News ever thought about doing a half hour of evening news of nothing but good news? And she responded to me, and she said, Kevin, actually, I already did that a few years back. I did a half hour of evening news, which was nothing but good news. The whole half hour was nothing but good news. 
And she said, sadly, it was canceled because it was the lowest rated show we've ever had. <laughs> and she said, isn't that sad? Isn't that sad? But I think that speaks powerfully to how we as a society and our psyche, you know, just wants to hear bad news. You know, it, it's like when we drive past a bad accident, wh why, do, why do cars get backed up a lot? Sometimes the, the lanes are clear. But when we see a bad accident, everybody's slowing down to look, to look. You know, w there's something natural or in our psyche that... That, that wants to hear bad news. St. Augustine says this, we are an Easter people and Alleluia is our song. Not negativity is our song. Not bad news is our song. But Alleluia is our song. So sisters and brothers, let us be an Easter people that see the resurrection all around us despite the pain in our lives and our world. Let's look at the reality of resurrection. One of my best friends from many years ago uh, that I was in ministry with as a young priest, she stands to me as an example of someone uh, who, who uh, she is a witness to the resurrection to me. Um, she's gone through a lot of pain in her life, a lot of pain, yet she relies on God. She puts it on God like no one else that I really know. Um, her she had breast tumors and she had to have both of her breasts removed. After that, her husband at the time started getting on the internet and talking to other women and eventually divorced her. This was, this was extremely painful. But she put that in God's hands. She's, she was like, Kevin, I need to put it in God's hands. Uh, after that, she met a good guy, and they got married, and a year later, he died of cancer. She put that in God's hands. This is a woman who has been through a lot of pain in her life, yet there is a joy about her that is deep. There is a sparkle in her eye. There is a smile on her face. And she always says, Kevin, I, I give it to God. I just know that God is going to take care of me. She is a witness to me of the resurrection. Now, when we look to the positive, when we are an alleluia people, we're not seeing with rose-colored glasses. We're seeing with eyes of faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk with spiritual eyes, with eyes of faith, and we walk together in community to lift one another up and to be those Alleluia people. And I believe here at Raboni, we are an Alleluia people. Despite maltreatment being beaten and eventually put to death, the disciples knew hope and joy and had great courage. Despite their mistakes, despite Peter even denying that he knew Jesus in the end, despite Thomas's doubting, the disciples knew love and forgiveness. And this transformed them and they went out to proclaim the good news, the good news and tolerance. May we be a people that see the good in ourselves and each other and our world instead of judging. We are an Easter people and Alleluia is our song. So sisters and brothers, let us be the joyful fools who dare to look for and see signs of the living Christ and resurrection that are all around us and within us. Amen. Make your friends together, we profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father, 
through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For a sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophet. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In faith, we now present our petitions before the Lord. Please respond, <coughs> risen Lord, hear our prayer. For our church, may we know the Lord in the word, in the breaking of the bread, and in the welcoming of every stranger, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to be witnesses of resurrection hope, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to see the appearance of the risen Lord in our lives and in our world, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. In gratitude for the warmth and light of spring, may we be lifted to new life and hope this season, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and now experience an eternal spring with God, may they be a source of life and strength to those left behind. We especially remember David Schafferman. For these, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we ask you to receive these prayers that we make in the faith of Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. And pray that these are sacrifices and be accepted with God in our hearts. May the Lord accept the sacrifices in our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's church. Lord, receive these gifts from your church. May the great joy you give us come to perfection in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Father of all who are ever living God, we, we do well always and ever to give you thanks to Jesus Christ our Lord. We praise you with greater joy than ever in this Easter season when Christ became our Paschal sacrifice. He has made us children of the light, rising to new and everlasting life. He has opened the gates of heaven to receive his faithful people. His death is our ransom from death. His resurrection is our rising to life. The joy of the resurrection renews the whole world by the powers of heaven. Sing forever to your God.
you are holy indeed. And all creation rightly gives you praise. O Lamb, O holiness comes from you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the Holy Spirit. From age to age, you gather the people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a perfect offering may be made by the glory of your name. And so far, we bring you these things. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and gave him thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his friends, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat. This is my body, which will be given up. Thank you. 
and with courage we say that one prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, for death as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, but let us peace in our day. In your mercy, give us free from sin, and protect us from all worry, as we wait to join the hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, we say to your apostles, I give you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, look on your people with kindness, and by these Easter mysteries, bring us to the glory of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God.